Imagine rasam dipped in noodles. Let's go in and see what's there. This was our uh, exploration of Karakot. One naan and one kampot. Yes. Naan with me too, with me too. You have to take one dos. Hi guys, welcome back to our brand new vlog. Uh, so we are right now inside this restaurant and we have ordered Ashlan food which is one of the most authentic dishes here in Kyrgyzstan. It's not entirely uh, Kyrgyz like in uh, the tradition that they eat this but this actually comes from the Dungan people who live in the region of both China and Kyrgyzstan. And this food is surprisingly vegetarian. So we've got a meal of this and then we'll show you what it's like before we set on to explore the rest of our food. So this Ashram Pu is a cold dish. It's basically a big cup filled with noodles, flat noodles and round noodles. And on top of that, she put two spoons of chili paste and also some kind of paste which is made out of tomato, onion, coriander and a little bit of egg. And this entire thing is immersed in soya sauce. It looks really spicy and delicious. I'm going to give it a try now. Mmm. I feel a kick of vinegar and a little bit of garlic. It's really spicy. The closest I can relate to this is our rasam. Imagine rasam dipped in noodles. It's oh, that really would be an tasty. interesting dish to have. Oh, it's really tasty. So they've also given us this bread. It's just a deep fried dough. And there's also some chili on the side for those who want it. Let's give it a try. <laughs> Mm. It tastes exactly like our chana batura batura. Just thick bread, like a big puri. We are on the second lane inside the bazaar and as you can see this lane is completely filled with beauty salons for ladies. Every shop here. The row we went to before had only shops which were selling Ashlan foods and it's actually called as Ashlan Food Street here in Karakol. The bazaar was so busy now we have come to the last lane where they're selling only you know silver jewelry and different kinds of rings and necklaces. Yeah but just a quick update or two about Karakol. Karakol is actually the fourth largest city here in uh, Kyrgyzstan. And it's so close to China I think just around 150 kilometers. Yeah that's right and that is why people here are not entirely only Kyrgyz tribes. There is a completely unique mix of people who come from western, northwestern China from Russia and even from Kyrgyzstan. So there are multiple uh, nomadic tribes that come together. One of which actually has a lot of prominence. Uh, it's the same Dungan people we uh, ate Dashtan Fu from. And uh, now I think Shish wants to take us somewhere. Where do we go? We are going to go to the Dungan Mosque. So let's go. By the way, for those who are wondering, Karakol is the largest city on the Isikul Lake but the population of this city is only about 85,000 people which can clearly you know show you how small this entire place is really. I was feeling that this city was not too hot because it's at an elevation of around 1800 meters it's pretty cool and also it's right beside the lake so the wind blows and makes it temperature even more cooler. Just picked up two postcards. This one is from Altin Arash Arashan Valley and the other one is from Alakul Lake. Both of these are near Karakul yeah. and even though we don't get to go there, we get to send you one of these. So if you want to get these postcards from us, don't forget to comment down below.
Now we are at Dungan Mosque. We just entered, and as per their rules, uh, the lady needs to cover her head and all her parts of the body. So they have kept all these clothes which you can use. I was fully covered, so I just used this head scarf to cover my head. Let's go in and see what's there. <coughs> This mosque actually looked a little different. It was so colorful and I could see boxes like square shaped structures and it was filled with different kinds of colors. One of the main reasons why this mosque is so unique and different from the usual, you know, typical mosque architecture that we see is because this belongs to the Dungan people. And the Dungan people were actually Chinese tribes that used to live in the northwestern part of China. Of course, they converted to Islam due to, you know, invading armies and so on in the past millennia. But in 1877 or so, they were themselves banished from their, uh, you know, their turf or their territory. And then they ended up coming here and settling. And then they built this uh, mosque as one of their uh, prominent houses of worship. And the Dungan people were uh, often forced, uh, especially when Kyrgyzstan was absorbed into the uh, larger Russian Empire. This was in the 1800s. Uh, the Dungan people were forced to sort of culturally align with the rest of the Russians and the Kyrgyz. But uh, somehow they happened to keep their culture alive. So you still get to see mosques like this and eat food like Ashlan folk. So Kyrgyzstan in that way definitely is quite secular. They have space and tolerance for many religions. It's not just uh, Islam. Uh, however, I think we will see something interesting in the next monument that we go to. Now that we have seen a mosque, why don't we go check out a church? And by the way, the mountains you see in the back, that's the Tian Shan Mountains. And it's almost always covered in snow. If you come here in the winter, I'm pretty sure it'll be even more amazing. Although it'll be like freezing cold to even step outside. But wow, look, a whole city being surrounded by mountains. It reminds us of Laos. <laughs> So this one right here is the Russian Orthodox Church and if you remember we saw a very similar one back in Bishkek also. But this one is a, a little more like rustic, like everything's made of wood and you can still see it because they've not really painted over it. Inside it's very beautiful, they don't really let you film so much. So we just uh, went in, made a small prayer and then came out. Uh, they have a very beautiful garden here. It's really peaceful, you can hear birds, a lot of kids playing there. They even have like a little water fountain to drink uh, from and then, yeah, as you can see, Shish is just enjoying that little seat there. This was our uh, exploration of Karakol. Uh, normally people come here to Karakol to go on day hikes and overnight uh, treks uh, into the mountains here. Um, uh, we chose not to do it because uh, one, we don't have enough time and the second thing is we wanted to see Karakol for itself. We had heard a lot about how the, the culture and tradition still remains from both the Dangan as well as the Russian times. So that's what we thought we'd show you. Uh, but the nature here is supposed to be really good, especially if you come in winter. There's supposedly like a ski station right here, just about 20 kilometers uh, southeast of the city. And then th from there you can like obviously do like really good skating on the ice, on snow. And uh, maybe some other time when we are here in the right season, we'll get to do it too. So far we've never really skied or really played in snow except long ago in Murmansk. Thanks you guys for coming along and exploring Karakol with us. And we'll see you in the next one. Bye!
shops which are selling Ashlam foods and fish curries. Correct? What was that? What did you see? Sustai Paya. It's lifted up. I don't know what you're doing. What is lifted up? Always here, you become a girl one. Okay. So thanks you guys. <laughs> so subscribe. Subscribe. Let's say it like this. Subscribe. Show them your front two teeth. Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe.